Hello everybody and um, welcome to today's event, The Worst Journey in the World. It's fantastic to see you all on this very hot day. Um, in a moment you're going to be meeting Kate, Georgia and myself Gemma. We're going to be running today's sessions. Uh, just before we start, you're going to need some items. So first of all, if you've printed out the pages for the Passport to the Past, those are the images that you see on the left, you'll be needing the special pages focused on the worst journey in the world. They would have been sent to your parental guardian uh, this morning. Um, if you haven't had a chance to print these out, please don't worry. You can always do it after the session if you want to. Um, instead, a couple of pieces of paper will do instead. Now, we are going to be doing some drawing in the second half of today's session. Um, so as well as some paper, you'll also be needing either pencils or pens, a sharpener or rubber, um, depending on what you want to draw with. Um, if you have coloured pens or pencils, they might also be quite useful. Um, you'll also need something to lean on, so a table or a hard book. Um, you'll need that for later on in the session. Uh, next, if it is your parents' name on the screen, it would be great if you could change it so that it's your name. Um, just first name only, please. Um, that way, if you want to ask us questions or show us your work, then we know who we're talking to. Uh, finally, if you'd like to ask questions, um, you can do this at any time during the session. Um, if you want to do this, you can do it by raising your hand, um, or alternatively, you can chat. Uh, uh, sorry, type it into chat. Um, and if we get a lot of questions in one go, we might uh, hang on to a few of them for later on in the session. Um, but we will hopefully try and get to all of them. Uh, for the rest of the time, um, it'd be great if you could put yourself on mute because that way, if you've got a dog barking or little brother or sister in the background, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and we're going to be filming today's session. So if you're not happy being seen on the camera or being heard, then um, please either turn off your camera or put yourself on mute. Um, we're now going to give you just a minute or two to gather up those items, particularly the drawing materials, um, so that you're ready for later on in the session. So we'll just give it a minute or so, and then we'll, we'll start the session properly. Thank you. Hello and welcome everybody. Um, it's great to have you all here. Uh, lovely to see everybody. Some people that we've seen before. Um, I can see we've got some people who are with us from as far away as Canada, which is fantastic. Um, a few familiar faces and some new faces, which is wonderful for us. So thank you very much for joining us. So what we like to do at the beginning is have a very big hello to everybody, from everybody to everybody. So if you can just take yourself off mute for a minute, we'll count to three and then we'll have a big hello. And th those of you who are on camera will give each other a big wave. So after three, one, two, three. Hello. 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 Welcome, hello. everybody. Hello. Thank hello. Hello. Thank you hello. for joining us. Okay, back hello. on mute. Hello. 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 Smashing. Here we go. So, what are we going to be doing today? Um, so, this session is called. Um, it's all about pioneers and frontiers, and we're going to be meeting some pioneers who came from Gloucestershire. One in particular, Edward Wilson. Uh, who was part of a pioneering voyage to the Antarctic. Um, and he was an artist and he came back with some of the first paintings and drawings of the scenery and the animals from that part of the world that had ever been seen. Uh, Wilson, Edward Wilson taught himself to draw and we've got an artist joining us today. We've got Georgia with us and he's, she's gonna give us some tips about how to improve our drawing skills. We're going to find out a little bit about some other Gloucestershire pioneers, and then at the end, we're going to be planning some adventures of our own. So, what's a pioneer? Well, a pioneer is some pioneers are sometimes called trailblazers, and a pioneer is, is often somebody who is the first person to do something. So, it might be the first person to go somewhere, for example, the moon. 
It might be the first person to invent something like vaccinations. And a Gloucestershire man called Dr. Edward Jenner invented vaccinations. We'll find out a tiny bit more about him. Or it could be somebody who changed the law or um, changed or ran an important campaign. And a good example of that is the, the suffragettes who campaigned for women to get the vote. Um, pioneers have to be tough because sometimes people don't like new ideas and new way of doing things. So pioneers have to stick to their guns um, because sometimes people will oppose them because they don't want to change and they think they'll be worse off if they do. So here are some Gloucestershire pioneers. There's Edward Jenner there on the left who invented vaccination and all vaccinations that have happened since he first invented them about uh, 225 years ago are based on what he did. So the vaccinations that people are having now for COVID-19 all happened because he invented that all those years ago. Lillian Faithful invented the first care homes for people who were old and frail and didn't have anyone to look after them. So she saw lots of old people who didn't have anyone caring for them and she thought, this is wrong, I'm gonna change this. So she invented care homes for those people. Now this lady is called Joy Lofthouse and she flew um, a Spitfire fighter plane in World War II. So she was very brave. There weren't very many women doing that job. Lots of men thought women shouldn't be doing that job, but she was up there along with those brave men um, flying a fighter plane. And finally, here's Edward Wilson. We're going to find out a lot more about him. Seb, did you have your hand up? No, okay. So um, here we are, Edward Wilson, who was part of this famous voyage to Antarctica. Um, and he had two roles in that expedition because he was a doctor. So he was there partly as the scientific officer and to look after the other people on the voyage. But also he was a fantastic artist because he taught himself to draw and paint from when he was a child. He grew up near Cheltenham and he taught himself to draw from animals and birds and plants and landscapes that he saw all around him. And he, when he was in his thirties, he left his very comfortable life in Cheltenham to go on this trip to the Antarctic with Captain Robert Scott, even though he knew it was going to be very dangerous, it was going to be very difficult, and he knew that there was a good chance he might not survive and come back. And actually he did die whilst he was on that voyage, we'll find out a little bit more in a minute, but he left behind a wealth of diaries and sketchbooks, some of which we have in our collections here at Gloucestershire Archives, and many of which are at the Wilson um, Museum in Cheltenham. So a little bit about Antarctica. Antarctica is the most southern continent and it's the second largest landmass in the world. Um, it's about 60 times bigger than the UK and it's by far the least populated. So there are fewer people there than anywhere else in the world. In the summer there are about 5,000 people there, in the winter about 1,000 people. As a comparison, in Gloucestershire, um, we have 640,000 people at the moment, just in one county in the UK. So you can see there are hardly any people there. And that is because it is the coldest, windiest and driest continent. About 98% of it is covered in ice. And it's still covered in ice, even though we, we know that that's changing because of global warming. Uh, but there are animals and plants that live there. So including things like penguins um, and seals. It was the last land region on Earth to be discovered. So the Terra Nova expedition that Edward Wilson was a part of, Terra Nova means new land, um, and they set off to Antarctica. This was between 1910 and 1913, so about 110 years ago. Captain Scott led the, exp the expedition knowing it was very dangerous, but determined to find out more to improve and increase the knowledge that we had about that area. Some people criticized Scott because they thought he was only doing it out of vanity because he wanted to be famous. He wanted to be known as the first person who went there. They didn't have cars. They relied on sled dogs, pulling sleds and ponies. And they walked a lot of it as well. The temperature was always cold in the winter months. It was, there were freezing winds and it dropped to minus 80 degrees. So in an English winter, we know it's normally at around about um, naught degrees. That, that's about as cold as it usually gets. Um, clothes and sleeping bags were made of reindeer fur. 
And you can actually see the snowsuit that Edward Wilson wore. We have a picture of it here, but you can see the real thing if you go to the Wilson Museum in Cheltenham. This is the, a picture of the cabin that they lived in for, for several months. Um, in Antarctica, um, what happens is in, in, a, in late April, the sun sets and it is dark then for several months. The sun doesn't rise again until October time. So they have several months where it's completely dark. It's even colder in that, in that um, part of the year. And it's very, very dangerous to set out then. So they lived in this tiny hut. Um, they kept busy with their scientific research. They looked after their ponies and their dogs, obviously, and they lectured, they gave each other lectures on different subjects. And we know that Edward Wilson gave a lecture on sketching. Um, they played football. Obviously, they didn't have any TV or internet or phones that we're used to having today. So they had to find their own way of keeping themselves busy. Uh, so during that time they were living in the hut, um, Edward Wilson decided he wanted to go and see if he could find some emperor penguin eggs. He knew that there was a colony of penguins about 60 miles from the hut where they were living. So he set out with two of his companions into this total darkness and extreme cold. Um, and they, it took them 19 days. And one of his companions said it was the worst journey in the world. That's where we got our title from today. They traveled in darkness and in very low temperatures. Their clothes froze up, their sleeping bags constantly froze up. Blizzards and storms destroyed their shelter and blew their tent away. But they did find the penguin colony and they were able to return with three eggs. And it's rather sad that although Edward Wilson never made it home, the eggs did, and, and here they are, and they were used for scientific research of the, the first time that those had been seen. So there's another sad part of this tale because um, when they set out on the expedition, Captain Scott and, and his companions knew that they were in competition with another expedition to reach the South Pole first. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to get down to the most southerly point in the world, the South Pole. And they knew that another expedition from Norway led by a Roald Amund Amundsen um, were in competition with them. So, um, what happened was that Scott's team left their hut in October 1911 and with lots and lots of difficulties and hardship, they reached the South Pole on the 17th of January 1912 and found that their, their rival team, Amundsen's team, had got there a few weeks before. So that was obviously very disappointing for them. So here's a photo of them at the South Pole. On the return journey back from the South Pole, back to their camp, they met with more difficulties. They couldn't meet up with their sled team and their dogs. The temperature fell even further and they didn't have enough fuel and they didn't return to the base. And in November, the search party found their frozen bodies and built a grave. Um, Scott's diaries found with his body revealed what had happened. And um, Edward Wilson's sketchbooks full of his beautiful sketchings and drawings were retrieved and found and brought back. So the group did leave a legacy. They left the, the Wilson's paintings and drawings, diaries, and also a lot of scientific research. So here we are, here's the grave that was made for them when their bodies were found. So we're gonna have a quick look at some of the sketches drawn by Edward Wilson who taught himself. So the one on the left of the little blue tit, that he did that was when he was just a boy and he developed his skills throughout his life. And he said that he did that by watching, looking and listening very closely. He said he was so close to nature that he could hear the heartbeat of a bird. Um, and so you can, the next one is a little sketch he did when he was a little bit older. And you can see how he gets more and more skilled at drawing as he, as he gets older. And here's one of his surviving sketches from the Antarctic. He was um, fascinated by emperor penguins and he's got, he drew lots and lots of um, sketches and paintings of emperor penguins. So now we are going to be drawing today. Um, Georgia is going to lead that for us. Uh, and we are using 
taxidermy specimens. We can't draw from live animals here. So what we have is some stuffed animals, which we have borrowed from um, the Wilson Museum in Cheltenham. Now, modern taxidermy uses only uses animals which have died naturally or perhaps have been hit by a car, but are still usable for that purpose. Um, the ones that we have here, like many taxidermy things, are displayed in glass cabinets. Um, there's a very, very good example that you can see at the Wilson Museum of the Dowdswell pike, which is a monster fish, absolutely enormous fish, um, and you can see him at the Wilson. So now we're going to meet Georgia who's going to be giving some tips for creative drawing. So if you haven't already got things like pencils, pens, paper, sharpener, rubbers, all those things, quickly whiz and get those now. Make sure you've got a flat surface to work on. We're going to spend about 15 or 20 minutes doing this, and we're really hoping that at the end you'll be happy to show us your work. OK, so has everybody got everything together? And um, when you're ready, Georgia, are you ready to start? I'm ready. Uh, so hi everyone. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing some drawing with you today. And uh, the my friends at the archive are going to, uh, so everyone should be seeing uh, Kate's camera full screen and hopefully we'll uh, cut to a camera that's got the taxidermy specimens. So this is going to be our first one. How I would like us to start, uh, just by show of hands, who really likes drawing? And is there anyone who's a bit less confident at drawing, who maybe doesn't, doesn't draw a lot? So I really want us to just have fun today. This isn't a, I, I want everyone to just feel relaxed and have a nice time, grab your favorite pen. So I, I'm just gonna be using my favorite colors of felt tips today. Even if they're not the right colors, I'm gonna use my favorite colors. And what we're gonna start off by doing is we're gonna draw this uh, little bird from three different angles and we're gonna do it quite quickly. So we're just going to draw it for one minute. Then I'll ask my friends at Gloucestershire Archive to, to move it. We'll draw it for one minute again. So one minute is not a very long time. You might find that you're frustrated that you didn't get to finish what you were trying to do, but this is just to get us warmed up and uh, feeling good so that we can move on to, uh, to draw some other things. Is everyone happy with that? Does anyone, uh, you can wave at me if you have any questions. Yeah, I've got a question from Seb. Do you want to unmute? Um, how long does it take all together, like for the two minutes and the break? So we'll do, uh, we'll do three minutes like this, then we'll do one more drawing that takes three minutes and one drawing that takes five minutes. So we'll be doing this for about 15 minutes total, and then we'll show our drawings. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's great. Let me just get back to my view. All right, so can everyone see the little bird up on their screen? Yeah, no, okay, a few people can't see it. So you'll need to be in speaker mode and then I think I'll need to be quiet. Um, archives people, can you help? Okay, one minute. Let's start. Try and focus on the basic shapes of what you're looking at. Try, remember that you don't have lots of time. So just think about what are the outlining shapes. Where is it fluffy? Where is it, uh, where's it got a little shiny eye? Try and uh, pick up those little bits without trying to do too much detail. And just a few more seconds. And then I'm gonna 
ask uh, my friends at the archive if you can rotate the bird so that we can see a different angle. Thank you very much. And we'll draw this angle for one minute. So try and think about uh, what you learned from the first time looking at it. Look at the way that changing the angle has brought out different parts of it. It can really help with drawing to make sure you spend lots of time looking at the thing you're drawing. Come back to it and uh, don't try and sort of look at it and then look at your paper for a long time. Look back up at the thing you're drawing more and you'll find that it's easier. Okay, and at the archive, when you're ready, let's have the last angle on this one. Thank you very much. And just remember, these are only a minute, so it doesn't matter if you're frustrated with them or if they don't come out how you want. These are just to get you warmed up, and then we'll do a couple more drawings after this. Okay, so we're going to move on to a different exercise now. And for that, we're going to have a new bird to draw. So we've got uh, a black bird now. Um, could we pull it a little further away? Yes, perfect. So I'm gonna take a minute to explain what we're doing for this one. Uh, what I'd like you to try and do when you draw this blackbird is try and draw it without taking your pen away from the paper. So keep the, or your pencil, whatever you're using, keep the tip of that in contact with the paper. So you can go back over lines you've already drawn, or you can loop back around, uh, experiment with different ways of making a line. But we're going to do about two and a half, three minutes trying to draw this without taking our pens off the paper. So make sure you have picked a pen or pencil that you really like. I am going to use a purple one. And let's go. With an exercise like this, it can really help to focus on the shape, the outlines. And don't worry about overlapping your lines or crossing them out. Just really let yourself experiment.
how long have we got left, Georgia? Uh, another 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking, Kate. We'll, uh, we'll put the finishing touches on. And we will stop there. So, oh, uh, oh. Seb, definitely. This is, this is your creative work. Yes. Sorry, I, did I miss something in the chat? Yes, please. So if you've got colored pencils and you want to color it in, you definitely, you definitely should. So how was that? What did we think, guys? Was it like a, a new challenge? Did you like it? Thumbs up? Or did you not really like it? Thumbs down. It's okay if you didn't really like it, by the way, but I'm seeing thumbs up, which is good. So I think that when you're drawing, it can be quite um, fun to, to try and do something different that you wouldn't usually do, and you can get sort of a new, uh, a new result. Uh, so we've got someone who doesn't, Ruth, you don't know if you, if you liked it or not. Fair enough. It's definitely fun to experiment and try new things, and that's how you can start to develop your own style and grow your skills. So we're going to do one more drawing. And for this one, we are going to use five whole minutes. So use as many pencils and pens, color it in as much as you want. Uh, and this one just uh, is all about your creativity and your freedom. We're going to draw this nice bunny. Uh, and you'll have plenty of time to really uh, focus on the details if you want to or you can really try and capture the shape. Uh, you can think about if you find that you've still got time left and you've finished drawing the bunny, you could think about drawing the ground that it's standing on or maybe even imagine a scene around it. So one more drawing and then we're gonna pick our favorite thing that we drew today and we're gonna give each other some positive feedback. So let's go. I think the thing I really like about this bunny is all the lovely texture that you can see. So you could maybe think about how you're going to uh, draw that texture and how you're going to make it show just how um, soft it looks. Lots of lovely little lines.
So we're about halfway through. Just remember, just like with the, uh, the first drawings that we made today, this isn't about making something perfect. Just really try and relax and think about uh, how, um, like think about the shapes that you're looking at and just try and make something that you really enjoy drawing. It's really just about having a nice time. I've already colored my bunny in green, so. Definitely more about having fun. If um, you're in the session, but you've got your camera switched off, but you're creating some work, you don't want to be seen yourself. I don't know if somebody in the room can help you just hold up your work without you being seen in the picture, because if you have made some work and you want to show it, it would be really great if we can see it. Um, another option is that you can send it in to us and we will keep it here at the archives and show it on um, our social media pages. Okay, start putting your finishing touches on this one. And then we're going to share whichever one of our drawings we think is our favorite today. And uh, like Kate said, there's no pressure. You don't have to go on camera. You don't have to share your drawings at all if you don't want to. But we're going to uh, do some really positive feedback, uh, focusing on what we like about each other's drawings. So. That's five minutes just gone. So uh, let's let me get back into uh, speaker view. And uh, yeah, has everyone uh, got a drawing that they'd like to share? So how I would like to do this is that I am going to uh, ask one of my archive friends to share what they've done. And I'll give an example of a nice positive feedback. And then I'll, oh, uh, Ruth, you've got a question. Sorry, would you like to unmute? Sorry, I didn't see your hand was up, Ruth. My hand's up because I would be somebody to share my drawing. Oh, great. Well, uh, so, uh, um, can I go to you after I've done mine then? So what we'll do is I'll do my, one of my archive friends will show theirs. I'll give an example of a nice positive feedback. I'll show one of mine and then we'll go to you, Ruth. You can give me a feedback and then show yours. Does that make sense? So, yeah. So we'll just keep passing down the line. Seb's got his hand up as well. It's are people with their hands up, people who just want to uh, show their work. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Okay. I'll, uh, so I'll call on you guys one by one. Uh, and what you'll need to do is say something nice about the person who went before you and then show your own. So, uh, so let's start uh, with archive, uh, archive people. What have you got to show me? Oh, so you chose to show your picture of the bunny. Look at that. That looks brilliant. So here, I think the thing that I like most about this is the way you've used uh, just nice outlines. So you've, uh, you've really focused on the shape of the bunny and drawn around the outside of the bunny and you can really see uh, what it is. So I am not gonna show my bunny picture because I actually wasn't very happy with it. <laughs> so here is mine. I, this is my one that I did without taking my pen off the paper. It's my bird. Uh, and I'd like to hand off to Ruth. So Ruth, can you give a little feedback and then show us yours? You need to 
uh, you'll need to be off mute. It looks great. Thank you. Let's see yours. So this is your bunny as well. So, wow, wow look at that. So I know that uh, Seb would like to go. So Seb, can you say something nice about Ruth's and then show us yours? I really like it. Thank you, Ruth. Um, and let's... Uh, I think, Seb, your background might be making it a bit harder for us to see. Got someone to the rescue. Right, let's have a look. Which one are you showing the top one or the bottom one? The top one. Uh, thank you very much for showing that, Seb. Uh, Charlie, can I ask you to uh, give one feedback and then uh, show us yours? So, oh yeah, look at this. Sorry, I did, Seb, there is another person here as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, looks great. Yeah, Charlie, when you're ready. looks great uh so is there anyone else who wants to share their work who would give a feedback on charlie's i've got hands up all over the place uh let's go to daniel uh so do you have something nice to say about charlie's daniel okay. and then let's uh let's see yours oh look at that so much color brilliant uh, I have a bit of red in the ears too. So there is a hand up on Moses's camera. Uh, would you give some feedback to Daniel and then show yours? Yeah, I like the colour and the texture of the photo. So these are me and my sisters, both of the bunny. Oh wow, look at these. Thank you guys so much for sharing. So I think Moses, that... can you hold, can we see them one at a time? It was, it was so hard to see. Sorry to interrupt you. Can That's we see okay. yours and then your sister's? That's better. That's, that's clearer. Smashing. Oh, it's brilliant. Fantastic. Uh, What's your sister's name? Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you, Moses and Rebecca. Uh, Josie, would you uh, like to give some feedback to Moses and Rebecca and then show yours? I like the eyes and the um, drawing bit. Oh, wow, look at these. So you did, these are your three uh, bird poses. I, look at, and you did those in one minute each. Well done. Um, is there anyone who hasn't been Austin and Max and Seb's sister as well? So let's go to Austin and Max. Uh, you guys unmute, say something nice about Josie's and then show us yours. I liked it be because it would it it bring out the outside texture a lot. And here is mine. I went with the rabbit. I just wait. I have my. Yeah, look at that. I couldn't finish the whole head because yeah. the because the this, you know the bit where all the cameras oh. are that that was blocking my view of the head. Oh no! Oh, I got most of it. Looks great. So I think Seb's sister hasn't been, and then, oh, and Freya has, has her hand up as well. So can, uh, we'll go back to Seb's sister. Uh, who's, who's, what's your name, sorry? What's your name? Freya. Uh, my name is Freya. And- uh, She's the youngest member of the group. <laughs> Uh, so there's some uh, really nice use of colour here, a few different colours. And have I still? Uh, and 
can I just, uh, can you, if I haven't got to you, if I've missed you, can you raise your hand either uh, on Zoom or yeah, on your camera? Uh, otherwise, okay, so Freya, other Freya, uh, do you want to share something? Do you want to come on camera and share? Or unmute? Look at that. So hold it up a tiny little bit more. Uh, and then I would like to ask uh, to close the circle. So to come back uh, to the archives, could you give a positive feedback to Freya, please? Uh, just before we do, I think we've missed out Max. Oh. Um, is oh, that I'm right? Sorry. It is Max, isn't it? Max, do you want to give some feedback? This, this is my page. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed you, Max. Oh, look at that. Very dynamic. I think you uh, really captured the shape. Well, I see, I saw all the textures, like the cut in the eye, the, the ear and the stuff bit there, and tail had a bit weight on the outside. Side. Lovely, and I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry I missed you. Sorry. Um, can I just say, um, I'm absolutely blown away by how good this is. And I can see you've all really looked. You've really looked and studied and drawn um, what you saw, didn't you? They're absolutely fantastic. I can't believe how good they are. I'm so impressed. Oh, Gemma, uh, just amazing. I can't believe, I mean, you've just spent a few minutes um, on these. Uh, I can't believe how good they are, how recognisable the level of detail and texture is, is just wonderful. Um, yeah, fantastic. I just so wanted to say, can we all, um, say that, yeah, sorry, just please. before we do, I just want to say that Charlie very politely asked on chat if I would show my bunny, which I wasn't very happy with. <laughs> so I will show it. <laughs> there it is. Hey, uh, very nice. Oh, uh, that is, that, that's pretty good. Uh, so uh, and well done, everybody. Yeah, well done, everyone. That was really, and, really brilliant. Uh, and thank you for all being very positive as well about each other's um, work. That's a really important thing that we've been do doing today as well. So, okay, we're going to move on to the like the final section um, of what we're doing today. And Gemma's going to talk about that. Yes, actually, just before we move on, if Kate wouldn't mind just giving me my phone, um, what I'd like you all to do, I'm just so impressed with these pictures. Yes. I'd like to get you all to hold them up for me. And I'm going to take a picture from where I'm sitting um, so that I can capture everybody's pictures in one go. Um, so if there's two of you in the frame, maybe you could try and both squeeze in together so we can get both of you in them. That would be wonderful. Yes, I'll do I'll do, do, do two different ones. So we'll take a shot over here. And then we're going to take one more. Do you want to take it? Thank you. Okay. Or oh, shall I? Yeah. Yes. There we go. Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody. And really well done. I hope that this is, you know, showing you just exactly what you can do in just a very short space of time and hopefully this is something perhaps you can continue with perhaps you've got a, a pet that you could draw or, or, or a little brother or sister um okay so oh, Gemma could I just ask I just wanted to ask um Seb's sister Freya a question Freya are, we, are you there um Freya was your drawing the one where you didn't lift your pen off the paper did you take the pen uh, off the paper or did you keep it that on one there? Really good, really good. Well done. Yeah, she Very kept good. it on there. It's a real skill to be able to do that. Well done. Lovely. Okay. Um, so I thought we'd sort of end the session by just going back to the idea of um, having an adventure, being pioneers, exploring perhaps somewhere that hasn't been explored before. And I thought that we could all just have a little think now and perhaps plan our own adventures out. And an adventure doesn't have to be as grand as going to the moon. Um, it doesn't have to be as big as changing a law. Um, it could be a small thing like investigating your backyard or perhaps doing something important for the environment. Um, so little things can be just as important as big things. Um, so first of all, I was just going to um, tell you about really the 
the last region on earth um, that can be explored. So pretty much everywhere on land has been explored now, um, but the place that hasn't is in fact the seas. And hopefully you can now see in front of you um, a couple of our pages from um, this month's uh, Passport to the Past resources. And you can see um, that there's a nice image there of the ocean. So the ocean is still a place where we could explore. Um, could anyone think of any of the, um, uh, you know, when we're thinking about a journey, we have to think about the bad and good things going on that journey. Can anyone think of any of the bad or good things about exploring the ocean? Why might it might be difficult? Why might it be amazing? Um, Max? You, you could run out of oxygen. Yes, absolutely. So you need specialist equipment. And yes, it can be quite dangerous. And you need to have training as well, of course, to be able to, to go under there with the oxygen. I think that's brilliant. Um, Austin? If you have a really thin suit, it could split and let water in. Yeah, absolutely. Really Definitely. Uh, Seb? You could um, climb to the top of your house. Right, absolutely. Yes, any other thoughts? Okay, Charlie. You could drown. Oh, sorry, I didn't quite hear that, Charlie. You could drown. You could, yes. Yeah. So, of course, that is a problem, of course, going underneath the water. You have to be a good, strong swimmer, don't you? Are a lot of you strong swimmers? Put your hands up if you like to swim. OK, that's quite a lot of you. Um, Moses is definitely shaking his head there. So maybe, maybe Moses, maybe your adventure could be one on land. Um, so putting the ocean now to one side, um, if you were going to go on an adventure, if you were going to go and explore somewhere, excellent, Ruth, wonderful. I can see that you're already gearing up to your exploration of the ocean. Um, if you were going to go um, on an adventure, um, where would you like to go? It doesn't have to be somewhere that hasn't been explored. Um, it could be anywhere you like. Uh, let's see, Austin, what do you think? Outer space. Outer space, yes, of course, that's another place where there hasn't been that much exploration. Have you got anywhere particular in space you'd like to go or anything you'd like to see, uh, Austin? Uh, in, in my... In my in my work, I've done I've done Mars, but I've just thought now, why not Pluto? Yes, that's great, excellent. Nice and far away as well, Charlie. How about you? I'd like to go to Africa and see all the animals. Oh, me too. Me too. That would be wonderful. Is there a particular animal you'd like to see? The big cats. The big the, cats. Yeah, the absolutely. Elephants. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, that's one that would be close to my heart as well. Um, how about the rest of you? Is there anywhere you would like to go on an adventure to? Uh, Josie? Um, the forest. The forest, yes, absolutely. You can get lost in all those trees. That would be pretty special, wouldn't it? And think of all that wildlife you could see as well. Um, Max? The West. The West. Whereabouts yeah. in the West? Well, in the desert. Ah, oh, yes. Of course, yes, because you're, you're Canada, aren't you? Yes, yeah, so there's lots of exciting areas around there and also in North America, of course, it might, might be similar to that. So, yeah, that's a really good one. I would like to do that too. Uh, Seb? Um, I would like to go to Argentina to see Lionel Messi. To see which? To see Lionel Messi. He oh, plays very for, good. He plays football for... Ah, I forgot that you were a football fan, Seb. Yes, absolutely. And Ruth, did, were you going to say one or did I just imagine I saw your hand up? 
no, no, you're good. Okay, so now what I want you to do is have a little bit of think about how you might plan out your adventure. So I want you to think of the adventure you'd like to go on. And what I'd like to ask you is who would you like to take with you? Okay, uh, Freya, what do you think? Seb's sister Freya. <laughs> You'd like to go to Africa as well. Yeah. And who would you like to take with you, Freya? Um, a doctor. Okay, very good. Uh, Ruth, how about you? I would like to go to Brazil in the rainforest and I would like to take my friend Melissa. Excellent, very good. Is she a good friend? Yeah. Brilliant. That sounds great. I'm sure you'd have a lot of laughs. Uh, Charlie? Well, I would like to go to Africa and I would take my friends and family with me. Ah, OK. So is that a lot of people? Yeah, that sounds like really good fun. OK. And Seb, should we go to you finally? I would like to go to Argentina and I would... <laughs> want to bring my friend Howie because he likes Messi. Excellent. Good stuff. Good and my stuff. sister. And my Sometimes it's important we take people who have special skills. Sometimes it's important that there's someone we get on with. And some point, sometimes it's actually just somebody who shares the same interests as us. Uh, uh, go on, Austin. I would like to take a photographer to my journey on Mars because I, I've written about it in in my papers, I would like to take a photographer, about 15 general assistants and my family. <laughs> Brilliant, I love that, you've really thought it out. That's great. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing you in the newspapers in the future, Austin. Okay, um, so I think that pretty much sort of it takes us to sort of towards the end of the session. Um, I'm just going to leave um, one more possible activity with you. We're not going to do it together because we're kind of ticking towards the end of the session. Um, but if you're now feeling really creative, and I think a lot of you are after all those wonderful drawings, one of the things you could do after the session um, is to create a, a, a new creature or people that you might come across on your travels. So in the past, when explorers were exploring the earth, they often came back with these amazing tales of these creatures and people that they came across. So for example, unicorns and dragons and mermaids were all the sort of things that people thought they saw um, and came back and told people about when they were off exploring parts of the world. So if you're feeling creative, that would be a really great one to think about where you want to have an adventure to and think about the kind of creature or person you might come across. OK, so um, we're going to pretty much um, end there. So I just have a couple of things to tell you before we go. Uh, Max, did you have a question? Yes. Um, you know, we did um, get time to make monsters. I might want to show mine. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, because I got time to make one. You got time to make one, so you're going to have a go at that one, are you? Okay. Have you done it? Have you made it already? Ah, I see. So if everyone looks on the screen, um, you can see that Freya has already made hers, oh. and that is amazing. I love that. So it's like a, a one-eyed giant. Is that right, Freya? And look at. Brilliant. And then this is yours, is it, Max? Yeah. Wow, Max, can you tell me what I'm looking at? A shapeshifter. A shapeshifter, fantastic. It all That's just does this. Yeah. All those are the eyeballs. And oh. it basically can and, uh, make into anything. Well, that is wonderful, isn't it? That means that you can have a hundred different types of strange creatures and people all in one, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't change shape. Well, it doesn't right. change co colors, but what it does with the stuff is it just processes it and melts it and turns it into itself. And, and it wants to be big. Right. This is great. I'm really creative. This is just the sort of thing 
Freya and Max that we had in mind. So please do have a go at those. And if you do them like, like these guys do, um, please do send them to us as well. We would really love that. Um, so um, just uh, to touch then on what you can do next, obviously I've already mentioned doing that. Um, if you're local, I think the uh, Canadians might find this a little bit difficult, um, but you could, um, uh, you could visit the Wilson uh, Gallery and you can see some of the things we've talked about in today's session. Um, you could also visit Dr. Jenner's house where he invented the first vaccination, and that's also in Gloucestershire. Um, finally, as I said, don't forget to send us your work um, if you do them. We love to have your work. We think it's just wonderful um, and we like to be able to show it to people and you produce such great stuff today um, if you can do it speak to your parent or guardian and see if they'll send it over to us that would be really wonderful okay and then finally um, does anyone have any questions before we sort of start to tie things up okay so what I now want All to right. do Reese, go ahead um where is Wilson Gallery the Wilson Gallery good question the Wilson Gallery is in Cheltenham um, in Gloucestershire uh, and it's all been done up really nicely over the last few years and there's loads to see there. Um, so if you can and your parents or guardians are willing, it's definitely worth going and having a look at. OK, uh, so for the next session, so it's going to be in one month's time, we have got such a great session coming up. It's called the best toy in the world. And what we want you to do is we want you to bring your favourite toy to the next session. And we want to meet your favourite toy and we want to find out what makes it so fantastic. OK, um, we're also going to tell you about some of the games and toys people played in the past. So 50 years ago, 40 years ago, what were the big selling toys? Um, we're also going to talk about the sort of games people do. And we're going to get you to have a go at making your own board game. Um, so just to give you a heads up, if you're coming to that session, um, please do bring along some paper and pens. Um, if you have things like scissors and glue, that kind of thing, bring those as well. Um, we will make games out of whatever you have got. Um, so, um, so bring that along to the next session and we'll have a go. And then finally, in the next month, we will um, be ending with a vote on the best toy ever and the best game ever and we're going to be wanting to hear that from you so you will get to vote for both of those things okay so that's a really exciting session please come along it's on the 6th of october the first wednesday four till five as usual and don't forget your favorite toy very important okay right so we're now going to say a big goodbye to each other so if i could ask everybody to unmute themselves and we'll have a count of three and then we're going to give everybody a really big wave um, and say goodbye. Uh, just before we do, I'd like to thank all of you for coming along. Um, I'd like to thank Kate and also Georgia um, for doing all the wonderful sketching with us. Um, and thank you to the Wilson as well, who lent us the animals and also um, for some of the materials we've used in today's session. So thank you very much. OK, are we all unmuted? Right, on the count of three. One, two, three. Bye. 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 See you next time. Bye. 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 It was really fun. Fun, fun, fun. Fun, 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 See ya. Bye. Did you tell oh, yeah. you direct message? I'm sad. Why? Because I'm on residential at this point. Mm. With the user, literally the last one there. No, with cats. With. Are you trying to be the last one in? Yeah. I mean, the last child. So. <laughs>